Hi, I'm Renee. I thought I would do something a little different than I usually do, which is... Uh, I guess I'm calling this Finnish Friday, I suppose. It fits. Anyway, as a Finnish person, I know surprisingly little about Finnish mythology. So I decided I might take a little of a deep dive in, into it and just see what I can find. I took like a couple of sources because do not trust a single source, also Tumbrel, because you know, Tumbrel's a nice place. There's a lot of people here. Also art, which is nice. Anyway, here we go. The first one, this is apparently Finnish.fi. I don't know if this is official, how official it is, but these are their... these guys. Yes. Here's a field guide to the fascinating mythological creatures that might still be lurking out there in the Finnish vast forests or in the dark depths of that remote lake. Every country's mythology has its own cast of strange creatures, monsters and legendary human figures. Finland is no exception and mythical creatures remained very much part of Finnish folklore until the country's rapid urbanization during the 20th century. Many fabulous Finnish figures appear in the runic poems of Kalevala, the national folk epic compiled in the 19th century by Elias Lönnrot. Elias Lönnrot. How unrot. Whatever, that, that is a Swedish surname, I'm pretty sure, so I don't know how to pronounce it properly. Yes, we do know Beiko. <laughs> Maybe our guide will inspire you to go on a crater spotting expedition. Tread carefully. Beiko, which is droll, basics, basically. Ranges in size were small to enormous, hairy with large nose and ears, dark forests and rocky ridges, slow, stupid and lazy, may turn into a rocky landscape featuring long periods, features four long periods, even centuries. Alright. Hum. Hum must be cool. That is a strange one, I haven't heard of that one. I was expecting to know all of these. Kinkaranka. Yes, which it makes basically, um, I don't know, children angry. There's this beautiful word in uh, Finnish, which it, which is itkupotku raivari, which is literally a uh, temper tantrum, but the literal translation is cry kick rage there's some fancy <coughs> finnish way of making it seem like a proper word but that's basically what it means which is hilarious which is the next one seriously scary this gargantuan creature of deep Resemblance a giant fierce octopus with long tentacles and suckers may also sprout dragon like wings. Alright. Baltic Sea and large lakes. Dangerously aggressive if disturbed. Hmm. Loch Ness Monster, yes. Most times gay you which <coughs> beautiful creature with small human like a be Beautiful creature like a small human, but with wings of those of butterfly, dragonfly or butterfly. Alright. Pawns deep in the forest. I know that one too. Men in gain, and that's also something I know of. Small human like. It's a um, gnome, yes. Pavan said a men in gain, and describes a chance meeting between the darkness loving men in gain, and a sunbeam. Alright, nocturnal and often timid. Usually friendly if approached carefully, but may trick children by leading them astray if you far wander too far into the forest. Hmm. Naki. Not the one I've mostly seen. The picture, I mean. 
may appear friendly and alluring at first sight, but eventually reveals true appearance. Horribly hairy and all scaly. Murky pools, especially on the bridges, that's interesting. Th this is, I know. I think Naki is one of those things that we know mostly. To me, Naki is more of a seaweed creature or just water weed. It doesn't have to be seaweed. Like weed creature. Like her hair is, but like no proper shape. It'll just grasp at you with those weed tentacles, I suppose, and drown you. Yes, this story can also drown children who swim in the deep water. Water spirit, siren, not really. Siren doesn't really work. Because to me, Anaki is just not a woman or any sort of a human. Easy. Wait. Yeah. Big and bad. <laughs> Kevin's Gorgas in wild rocky landscapes. Alright. Tonto, which is elf, but like Christmas elf. <laughs> Small, childlike, most easily seen around Christmas time, often wearing a red tunic and a pointy red hat, top it with a sleigh bell, keeps a close eye on children before Christmas and will report any misbehavior to Santa Claus with sorry excuses for kids expecting presents. Consequences, not... Well, I don't even know what I said. Else Pixies Leprechauns, not really. Okay, that was all we had. That's alright. We're listening to some Finnish patriotic songs. This one's Silampa Marsilaulu. Beautiful. Anyway, this next one. Culture trip. The white lakes and dense forests of Finland have always had a strong fascination and mysticism to those who live there and have inspired many mythological creatures and figures. Some of them are good natured, but others are best avoided at all costs. These are the ones most amazing creatures of the forest and waters in Finnish mythology mythology there we go to keep an eye out for the heesy this time in this one so Alex Mellon not a Finnish person at least according to the name anyway the ancient in ancient mythology heesy was a spirit who resided in wooded hills or groves and among other things created horses and was commonly associated with hoofed animals. He was said to own an elk with a hundred horns and a horse with head of stone, a back made of wood, feet of iron and a muzzle of fire. Christian missi miss missionaries in interpreted Heesey as a bad spirit, so he was he is now depicted as a monstrous creature who attacks travelers, steals from houses, and throws boulders in the fields. This Heesey is so famous that the Finnish translation of uh, Tolkien's books renamed the goblins Heesey. Have I ever read Tolkien's books in Finnish? No, I don't think I have. No, I haven't, weirdly enough. Anyway, that's interesting. We have... Isinkiwi. Ah, I don't know. Isinkiwi. I just want to check that out. I've... Heeden. Uh, excuse me. I just want to... Oh, yes. We have these guys. I want to check what it means though. We have a lot of these. They were caused by the Ice Age. Here we go. Wait. Magazine? What? I just wanted to know what he. Did. What it means. Sirtalokar. Ah. I suppose that's another name. Yes. It means whatever this means. Wait, I'm a 
for you English people, I'ma give you this. English. Sorry. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, that's a perfect, perfect way to translate it. Anyway, these are guys. Let's go back. Where were we here? There was a bit of a... Apparently, the heasy threw those around, you know. Haldia. Haldia are the Finnish equivalent of elves, brownies or gnomes. I wouldn't put gnomes there. The Tontu are house elves, recognizable today as providing the inspiration for Santa's elf helpers. What a Haldia emerge from the sea, wear hats and boots made of stone and can change their height of will. They are good spirits and can be summoned to help with tasks such as felling trees or curing illnesses caused by dirty water. Willow wisps. These spirits, sometimes personified in Finnish mythology as the Lembo, okay, usually appear as ball of, balls of light hovering over lakes. While they are rumored to lead the way to treasure, they are actually evil spirits who lead people to danger. Yeah, I know that. Even today, they are most commonly sighted around Finnish lakes during the midsummer. Yes. I know those are like something that will lead you to your downfall. That was something I know. It's a peiko again. Ikuturso keiju menninkäinen nakki. How do you tell the story of nakki? Nakki are water spirits who appear friendly and alluring before revealing their true monstrous forms. Then lurk in mer- Alright, that's basically the same thing. All right. Hmm. Not what I imagined them to be. Otso, which means basically bear in Finnish. We have another word for it in Finnish, but like that's the same thing. Anyway, bears play an incredibly important role in Finnish mythology, and they are once cults dedicated to. They were once cults dedicated to worship them as gods. They also are the king of the forest are bear spirits who are treated as highly intelligent divine beings. If a bear was killed, a ceremony was held to leave its skull in a sacred clearing with sacrificial gifts. Tapio Mieliki, the god and gods of goddess of the forest. Alright. Verenemo. That's a strange Oh Vedenemo. That makes a lot more sense. That's like water. What is the animal word for mother? Anyway, it's that. You wouldn't call your mother Emo. But you could call your cat's mother Emo. Yes. No, that's, uh, that looks cool. We might do that in a later episode. Another Finnish Friday, I suppose. Now we have this one. I like this one. Uh, the Finnish Book of the Dead. It's illustrated by Tara Portman. It's pretty. Very pretty. Raising the Dead. What are we gonna. I suppose we can click on that. So, Liekia is a ghost of murdered children ah yes flamey is the direct translation is a spirit of murdered children who has been buried in the woods Lieki in finnish means flame the Lieki screams whines and screeches very loudly in the woods it follows the living repeats everything they say and suddenly starts laughing ah yes beautiful Absolutely beautiful. We love that, don't we? The spirits of murder children. Raising the dead, army of the dead, Suyatar. Devaris, mother of snakes. Is Suyatar the Devaris? It's a creature living in the water. She's said to have a mouth 
in the middle of her head, she has destroyed a thousand men. I mean, her mouth isn't in the middle of her head. It's a strange thing to say. There is, a, there is the ogress in the sea with a mouth in the middle of her head, a tongue in the middle of her throat, was eaten at the hundred men, destroyed a thousand full-grown men. Now, may she now also eat thee up, as the bread she eats, as the feed she holds, magic songs of the middle fins. You notice nothing. And Biak, anyway, she can be seen sitting on a rock, pushing her hair around in a boat with a red sail. So what's the... Oh! So, so there is the offspring of an abandoned child of Loviatar, which of the no Bohyola Northland. If there had nine boys, named them diseases, but couldn't find a name for the tenth child, so she tossed her into a river, and of this child, witches and sorcerers were born, including the Suetar. Alright. In some poem versions, the child was a boy, in others it's a girl. Suetar gives birth to snakes by spitting in the water. Beautiful. Restrict and the great frost into a powerful force. What from what ha was thrown the heart from the heart's core of Suryatar? <coughs> All right. What else can we explore? Let's ignore all that. Kalma. Kalma, the god of graves. That's interesting. Cor Kalma, corpse death. It's a ruler of the graveyard. Also called Kalma's manor of mansion. The f Finnish mythology knows two realms of the dead. Dornala is far away island of the dead, appearing mostly in epic poems when a wizard makes a trip to the land of the dead. The other realm is Kalma Manors, Kalman Gardenot. And the graves near the villages. Often the two overlap, and the Kalmas manors are called the huts of Tuonela, Tuonela and Tuvat. Kalma appears mostly in old spells gathered from shamans, because the ancient Finnish shamans were the only ones that served, because were the ones that served as intermediaries between the dead and the living. If, for example, someone saw a dead relative entering their home, they would call the sage to guide them back to their grave. Sages, which is dear, they are good, summon the dead, Kalma's family, from the underground to help them in any challenging tasks, like fighting a disease or an evil witch. Cause it's a witch. Ugh. Anyway. Interesting. Yep. Karma disease is also called karma anger. Right. Let's go back. Please work. God. My computer's about to die. Let's get that. There we go. So for a spirit or I think we're gonna go... I don't know. That sounds cool. Iron-haired dog of Tony. That is so cool. A black dog from Underworld has iron hair, iron teeth and an iron heart, copper intestines, it breathes fire and has eaten thousands of men, for I, a black dog, own a hound of iron hue, by him I'll half eat her eaten, I'll half the bite her beaten. Magic songs of the things. The dogs are associated with otherworldly realms, like the Boyola Northland, where they are watchdogs and the lands of the goblins. Heasy, where they roam the shores looking for supplies to bring to the goblin blacksmiths. The shamans boast about having a, the black 
and dog in chains of their home. They feed it eggs to make it strong and teach it to attack and eat witches. In a den, I have a fairy nosed black dog. Its mouth is burning with fire, its throat glowing with flame, its teeth resemble cinder eggs, with a tongue shoved in between. Of iron is its heart composed of copper that entrails in its pouch. It has eaten already a hundred men, destroyed a thousand full-grown men. By it I have thee eaten up. They... That happens a lot. This is a very... Something they like to repeat, huh? It has already eaten a hundred men, destroyed a thousand full-grown men. No, right. You like it. Sure. It will bite thee bones and all, it will crunch thee bones and all, till thou canst not shake thy head, till thou canst not draw thy breath. Alright, let's go look at Thumbrol. Tony? I like Tuliketto, Firefox, which Revon Tuli, which is not perfect translation okay thank you this one says the fires of the fox it was the hunter's biggest dream to catch one as its coat was very valuable and it would have made you very rich and famous for the rest of your lives no thanks don't kill this bb it's so cute what wait oh <laughs> so Another Finnish mythology piece. This one is a story of how the world was created on the variation in Kalevala. Long story very short, a water bird lays her eggs on a knee of a goddess. Floating in the center, the eggs eventually fall and break, creating the world, the sky and the rest of the world. Which is why... Would that mean makes sense? Okay. We just like dogs, apparently. That's a Suayata. I think we heard about that one. Uh, that's where I found that page that we were just on. Tursas, that's a cute one. Eh. Oh my god, I so love this guy. It's so cute. Boobs, ignore the boobs. You saw nothing. Uh, shush. No. Is there such thing as mythology folk store? Finish? Okay. Thanks? Or is it all stolen? The thing is that Finns, are the United National Identity wasn't really a thing prior to the rise of nationalism in Finland. Alright. Very different depending on the location and group. They're different, I know. But still, Finns, no fucking chance. Because possible some point, Eastern Finns had beliefs similar to Karelians? No. But not the Western ones. At least for Karelians, when Finns as United National Identity was built, we were viewed as primitive. Therefore, closer to what ancient Finns were like. This caused Finns to overlook their own beliefs and culture since ours was more interesting, new and interesting than something that people didn't already know about. Sami and Karelian cultures are viewed as exotic and interesting than the old tales your grandma would tell ya. But as you can see, these are very much tied together. Building the Finnish national identity was more or less about finding things that were cool and what they could show off to other nations as theirs. With very little regard for if the things they were told were even accurate or true. Alright. It's very much hehe. <laughs> hehe. <laughs> That's cool. I wanna uh, put it up. That's now something I want to be known for. Naki folklore. Yes. Anyway, are we gonna end it here? I think we're gonna end it here. Thank you for watching. I have that painting. Not that painting. Yes, it's sh safe to show. Uh, it was something my mother crocheted. Not my mother, my grandmother, sorry. 
anyway, thank you for watching this little Finnish Friday thing. Tell me if you learned anything, that would be very interesting. And I hope to see you again. You can check out my other stuff right on the left, I think. I hope you have a great day. Bye!